Okay, so we all know that the stock market has been extremely volatile the last few weeks. Up a thousand points here, down a thousand points here, up 700 points here, oil going into negative territory. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? And while just about everybody's investment portfolio is down year to date compared to where they were last year, there are some companies that have done well. But did you know there's at least one exchange traded fund that is almost flat year to date given the losses that some people have encountered? Better yet, this exchange traded fund is a Vanguard Index Fund. Woohoo! In this video today, we are exploring Vanguard's three mega cap exchange traded funds. The main Vanguard mega cap ETF, MGC, the Vanguard mega cap value ETF, MGV, and the Vanguard mega cap growth ETF, MGK. One of these exchange traded funds is almost flat year to date. These mega cap ETFs are different than the S&P 500 index funds out there or even the total market index funds because they specialize in the largest companies in the United States. In this video, we're going to explore the differences between these three different mega cap ETFs and we're going to ultimately determine which of these ETFs is the best fit for your investment portfolio. Make sure to stick around all the way to the end to find out. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Average Joe on Money here and on this channel we talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the average Joe. So whether it's building your very first budget, paying off consumer debt, building your credit score, and of course investing your money for income now and for growth in the future, well if these topics are important to you, then this channel is your one stop shop. You know, I work full time and I'm married and I have four kids under the age of 10 and I spend a lot of time making these YouTube videos for you as well. So if you appreciate the time invested, more importantly though, if you learn some new or if you find some value out of this video make sure to hit that like button below and leave your two cents in the comments below it really helps out this video and ultimately my channel in that pesky YouTube algorithm okay if you're ready let's go ahead and jump over to my whiteboard and let's jump into these three mega cap exchange traded funds all right so let's break these three different exchange traded funds down we're talking mega cap exchange traded funds so we already know that we're dealing with a smaller segment of the stock market than even the S&P 500 but there are three different different ETFs to choose from, which one are we gonna choose? We're comparing Vanguard's mega cap ETF versus Vanguard's mega cap value ETF, and then Vanguard's mega cap growth ETF to see which one is the best choice for the average Joe investor to choose for their investments. Let's start with the one thing that all three of these ETFs have in common, and that is their expense ratio, which is the cost that Vanguard charges to manage these exchange traded funds on your behalf. For all three of these ETFs, the fee is 0.07% or the equivalent of $7 for every $10,000 invested in the ETF, and that's an annual fee of $7. But the expense ratio being the same is where the comparison stop. Everything else about these ETFs is completely different. Let's start with the number of holdings. The main mega cap exchange traded fund has 261 holdings, or about half of the S&P 500. The mega cap value ETF has 155 holdings and the mega cap growth ETF has 112 holdings. So let's differentiate between these three ETFs. The mega cap exchange traded fund MGC is the top 261 stocks based on their market capitalization or how much value in that company, meaning the largest companies, which we can equate to the top 50% of the S&P 500. Now we should differentiate between what we mean by value versus growth because they're two completely different investing approaches. When I say growth, you should be thinking companies like Apple and Amazon and Facebook and other companies that are growing at a fast rate technically faster than the rest of the stock market. And when I say value, you should be thinking of companies that are very much established that might be considered undervalued right now based on their price and their earnings and are consistently paying out income in the form of dividends. So when you think of MGK or the mega cap growth ETF, you should think of the top 112 holdings in the stock market that are growth stocks. And when we talk about the mega cap value exchange traded fund, you should be thinking of the top 155 value stocks in the stock market. As of April 17th, 2020, the per share price for the exchange traded fund for MGC 
is $101.40. For the mega cap value or MGV, it is $72.87. And for MGK, the growth ETF, it is $143 even. There's also a massive difference in the top holdings in these exchange traded funds. We already see that there's a massive difference in the number of holdings between the different ETFs, but the top 10 holdings are much more heavily weighted in one of these ETFs versus the other two. In the mega cap ETF, the top 10 holdings make up 30% of the exchange traded funds net assets. For the mega cap value ETF, MGV, the top 10 holdings only make up 28.5% of the net assets. And for MGK, the growth ETF, the top 10 holdings make up 52.10% of the net assets in the ETF. Let's talk a little bit more about that because you can see if you look at the top 10 holdings, you see some very common similarities and some common companies left out depending on the focus. You'll notice that the main mega cap ETF has all of the top 10 holdings between the other two because this holds 261 holdings. In theory, the top 261 holdings in the entire stock market. Again, based on market capitalization or how, how large the company and how much it's worth. But if you look a little bit closer at the mega cap value fund, in other words, an emphasis on the companies that are uh, maybe undervalued in the stock market that are not growth oriented, you can see some companies that are missing. You'll notice here you're not going to see Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Visa, Netflix. You're going to see companies like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, and AT&T. Very large, very established, and potentially undervalued companies as opposed to the growth companies. And vice versa, if you look at the mega cap growth ETF, you're going to notice that companies like Johnson & Johnson, Berkshire Hathaway, Procter & Gamble, and Chase are not there. There's a much heavier emphasis on the top 10 holdings. Companies like Facebook and Amazon and Apple and Google. If you look at the sector weightings, you're also going to notice a significant weighting based on the focus. If you look at the mega cap growth ETF, you see a heavy focus and emphasis, and this makes sense when you think about it, in the information and technology sector at 35% of total holdings. If you look at the mega cap value ETF, you see that it's not so much focused on the information technology sector, it's much more focused on the healthcare sector. With a 25% weighting in this specific sector. And again, when you look at MGC, the total market cap ETF, you see that it's much more of a balanced industry weighting with 22% in information technology and 16% in healthcare. Let's talk about year-to-date performance and historical performance because that's one of the key things we're looking at when we're looking at which ETF or which index fund to invest in. For MGC, the mega cap exchange traded fund, year-to-date they have lost 8.87%. The one year return is negative 5.07%, a loss. The three year return, 6.19%. The five year return, 7.45%. The 10 year return, 10.77%. And lifetime since 07, 7.30%. For the mega cap value ETF, MGV, the year to date loss is 15.83%. The one year loss is 13%. The three year gain, 1.46%. Five year gain, 4.76%, the 10 year gain 8.83%, and since 2007 when they created the ETF, 5.18%. And then for the mega cap growth ETF, we have a year to date loss of 1.68%, much lower loss than the other two. The one year return 3.36% positive, three year return 11.12, five year return 10.16, 10 year return 12.80 and the lifetime return since 2007 9.49%. Okay, so we've talked a lot of information and definitely a lot of numbers here. What is the best ETF for you if we're looking to invest in the mega cap exchange traded funds that Vanguard offers? So ultimately, in my humble opinion, again, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a tax advisor, I don't know your own specific situation, so this cannot possibly be construed to be financial advice for your specific situation. But in my own personal experience, I'm not 
touching MGC or MGV, the value or the standard ETF. Because in a lot of ways, they mirror the S&P 500 ETF, which Vanguard also offers VOO, or potentially even the Vanguard Total Stock Market, VTI. If you're looking for a play on the biggest S&P 500 companies based on the information we talked about, you gotta go with MGK, the Mega Cap Growth ETF. Yes, it's more focused. Yes, it's got less holdings. Yes, there's more risk because there's a lot less diversification than the other ETFs. But the truth of the matter is the S&P 500 from a growth perspective, especially with an emphasis on the information technology sector, has just outperformed the rest of the market. So if you want to invest and take advantage of that moving forward, then you're going to go with MGK. Now, to be clear, I'm not advocating at all to invest all of your money in MGK, by no means at all. I'm talking about taking a portion of your portfolio if you want to take a play at this and maybe 10, 15% at the most and put that in the mega cap growth ETF. Full disclosure here, I do own MGK, the mega cap growth ETF in my own personal Roth IRA account, which I hold with M1 Finance. Okay, so now it's your opportunity to leave your two cents in the comments below. Which of these mega cap exchange traded funds do you own right now in your portfolio? Or if you don't own them at all, which one are you potentially looking to invest in? In moving forward into the future. Any other Vanguard ETFs or index funds you want to see a comparison of? Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. So if you haven't done it yet, and how have you not done it yet? Make sure to click on that subscribe button below and click on that notification bell to be alerted to all of my weekly videos, at least two videos every week, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Wednesdays and Fridays. I'm very focused on getting new and fresh content out to you, my audience. Thank you for being there, by the way. The great news for you is even though this video is about to end, the learning doesn't have to stop. You can click on these videos right over there.